Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes, a video series about dealing with not getting haircuts during the COVID pandemic disguised as a Star Wars mobile game video channel. This is our talk series where we cover the latest developments within Galaxy of Heroes and we have some fun news in this road ahead. With these kind of videos, I like to operate under the assumption that most of you already know the news and you're here for my analysis of it. So we're going to jump around and we're going to start with what I think is the biggest news here. And it's probably not what you think. And we're going to do that because with the way these videos work, there's a certain amount of people who drop off as the video goes on. I want to make sure that the largest number of you hear what I have to say about this. So what I think is huge in this news is all the way down at the bottom. We're starting here with the title update. So the title updates... They're going to be smaller in scope, they're going to happen more frequently. The first thing already happened was the guild search. But what they're talking about next here is about the early game experience. And I think this could potentially be earth shaking. What they're talking about is changing which characters players receive at the beginning of the onboarding experience. And they're talking about changing which characters are immediately available. They hide it in different ways. But if you've been watching my new account series or watching a lot of my other videos, I've been hitting one point now for a while now. As far as the early game is currently designed, a Mace Windu rework is not possible. It is extremely well designed. It is extremely well balanced. None of the characters that become farmable on early nodes threaten to change that balance. It's really impressive. It's part of the reason why characters can't be added to any of the stores like you see people requesting all the time on, on Reddit. If they were to do that, it would make those characters easily farmable and accessible in the early game and it could completely throw off all the arenas. And that's why they can't touch Mace Windu more than a touch-up like how Anakin or Ahsoka were done, or the clones were done, where you see a unique get tweaked, or a Zeta being added that functions with another character. That's what they were limit, limited to with Mace. But if they remove Mace from the early game, he can be reworked now. But that means the Endurance can no longer be part of that daily ship challenge. So maybe that goes away. Maybe Mace is removed from the Squad Arena store. But if those are things that we see, which is possible under the wording that they have, they have brought this up with, it means we could finally get the Mace window rework. On top of that, they firmly said we are revisiting the Clone Wars era. I think this is finally on the table and we can really be speculating about it now because the biggest impediment is now on the table as being changed, and that is the early game experience. And here's what they specifically say. We've wanted to address the early game experience for a while, and we'll start with updating which characters all players receive as part of the early onboarding. Now they disguise it in a way where they say they want characters available who are immediately recognizable for anyone with a basic knowledge of Star Wars. They can't completely do that. They throw in any number of actually recognizable characters, it could break things. And in a lot of cases, a lot of those characters are available already. I think there are larger things happening here, and that's why they are shaking this up. Now the other things they talked about in this section here that's pretty important is there is this word choice here about a shipload of changes. A lot of people caught on to that and have been talking about it can mean any number of things. Hopefully at a minimum, it means that we have ship presets. So I stop accidentally pairing Galactic Republic ships with my Malevolence. That would be great because I like to switch between them on my arena climbs. And a lot of people have been hoping for a ship raid forever. I would love a ship raid. I would also like some more ships. I like fleets. That is a nice little hint that they threw in there for us. And from the title update in Mace Windu, we are, can naturally move up to Jedi Master Kenobi, the next Galactic Legend. The big thing here that I think is, is interesting is the changing in the cadence. We're getting one at a time now. I think that makes sense for a number of reasons. One, it's just going to allow for a more frequent disruption to the Squad Arena meta. And now that we have one, 
we can expect one soon after on the dark side, which will make sure that things aren't getting too stale within there. Partly because Canon's getting a little thin for Galactic Legend worthy characters. There's already a ton of speculation on what the dark side one is. I think we can all safely assume that it's going to be Robo Legs Mall. I'm going to have a separate video about that in the future. So because of the meta changes, the thin cannon, I like that they're changing the rate. Now, the new series that are coming out could potentially add Galactic Legend worthy characters, but I th I'm looking forward to this shifting a little bit. I don't know what the long-term future is for this strategy. Now, the Kenobi requirements, one of them is Mace Windu. Hopefully that means that we have a Mace Windu that is worthy of being Relic 3. I would actually feel a little bit better about my theory if it was like Relic 5, but okay, Relic 3. Uh, but we also got Ayla, Bo, these characters make sense, Negotiator, Kenobi. We're going to speculate on other ones in that future video with Robolegs Maul. Now, this next portion here, we're going to gloss over this pretty quick. May the 4th celebration. Just save your crystals for these double drops. This is when you want to spend your crystals. Always have them banked. Refresh the night before. Take advantage. That goes with what's going on right now, but that's a little late on some of that. But if you want some nodes for the current double drop event, that Resistance Hero Poe one is nice, and that Hux one is pretty nice, or that Sith Trooper one, you get some extra shards too. This gear, for the most part, is pretty nice. What I like to see is that the Razor Crest is already in it. The Negotiator is fine. The Grievous is fine. Kenobi is nice for players who are still working on them, which I am on the new account. The rest of this stuff is pretty healthy. I didn't compare it to the uh, fourth year or fifth year anniversary rewards, but for the most part, this is pretty good. The credits, I'd like some more credits. That's what I'm hungry for in the new account. The additional thing we have look, to look forward to is they've already announced when the additional requirements for Kenobi are going to be released. So we know that around June 9th, sometime thereafter, Kenobi is going to be added to the game. It's only a couple more months of what we are currently working with. Now, the next portion of the news, what I'm really interested in is Commander Tano. I love Ahsoka. She's one of the best characters in Star Wars. I talked about this in a previous video, but if you have not watched The Clone Wars, or at least, or in particular, the final series, you owe it to yourself to watch The Clone Wars and watch that final arc. It is some of the best Star Wars out there. If you haven't seen it, on my Discord, I have put up an abridged episode list where you can only watch the episodes that are relevant and will allow you to enjoy that final story arc. It's not that many episodes, but it is some great stuff. So with Ahsoka being added in game, that means a number of things are changing for the Razor Crest. Uh, first up, Ahsoka is being designed with key moments from season seven. She's gonna be stronger than a marquee character, not quite at the scale of an epic confrontation unit that is Malak and Gas. And we can expect to unlock Ahsoka after three hard conquests where you are earning the final reward crate. I think that might motivate a larger portion of the player base to get that reward crate. Not everyone cares about fleets. Again, I do. So what we can expect to happen to the Razor Crest. Older unit is going to be getting fewer shards in the final end of the event reward crate. The amount of conquest currency needed to purchase it will be reduced and it will appear more frequently. I think what that is really about is they want us spending our currency more. I'm just hoarding it. I think most of you are just hoarding it because the things we get out of it, uh, the other items we can purchase from those Jawa merchants is not worth buying. We have all the time we need to bead conquest. You, If you really want to, you can do an energy refresh. You don't need to. But if you're patient, there's no reason to buy anything from those Jawa merchants. Afterwards, there will be a third new unit introduced where the Razor Crest will then leave end of event pri and the end of event prizing and Ahsoka will move into that reduced amount. 
it will stay on the wandering scavenger nodes and it will be added to the shipment store. And the last thing that will happen, and this seems to be up in the air still, and they haven't completely figured it out, but possibly adding something to the journey guide or some sort of recurring event or challenge where we can then be getting that item after a year. Now I want to also use this moment where they're talking about what her power level is going to be to remind all of you of what occurred only one time for Django, which was the Marquee Plus that has never occurred again. It would be nice CG if they brought that back. That was basically a Marquee release where we got gear out of it every day during the period of the Marquee event. I miss it. The next portion here about changes to the conquest. They have are reiterating here that they want it to be monthly. I like that. I don't need more time in game. On top of that, they are saying there are going to be certain data disks that are going to be removed or changed. I was expecting this. Deployable cooldown systems is super powerful. I was already expecting them to reduce its occurrence. I'm still seeing it all the time in game. But on top of that, they're also going to be swapping out Dread and Quickening and replaced with Entrenched Convor's Agility and Future Vision. So we need to keep a lookout on if those are going to be as helpful. But as Conquest loses that new car smell, it's getting a little stale for me. I would, you know what I would really like is like in normal, normal mode or maybe in the first tier, the Sector 1, they had less weird buffs going on so that we could test things within it against either Gear 12 or that Relic 3, just something that was a little bit more informative. I've tried to throw in characters and all the weird uh, modifiers are throwing off any ability to test it. I would still like some ability to test things within Conquest. Now, the other thing they are saying, though, in this final portion, is that they're still looking at tweaking Conquest after a few more of these, and that's something I'm, I'm looking forward to. And they're addressing my concern by saying they haven't finalized the details at the moment, but the intention is to expand the theory crafting space with blend of old and new challenges. But in order for that to work, that means it really needs to be applicable to territory wars and grand arena otherwise the theory crafting is limited we don't need theory crafting for conquest or galactic challenges the last thing in here that we haven't addressed is this portion on the bad batch which none of this is new but yesterday or earlier in the week they did give us the developer insights on wrecker so we're going to quickly wrap up with those developer insights, but before we do that, two quick things. One, they did give this PSA that we are supposed to be getting this daily Canteen Energy gift pack. And if you aren't seeing this, look at your settings and go into legal. I was getting this on my main account. I was not getting it on the new account, so this might be affecting some of you. The other thing is we also received the monthly calendar where the login character for May is Cody. That makes sense for the Bad Batch. Also a reminder that Cody is very important to Kenobi, but one of the things that we speculated on during last month was that clones would probably be showing up for the Galactic Challenge on a recurring basis, like Mandos and Imperial Troopers were in previous months where they were showing up every other week, or every other galactic challenge and that is happening with clones so in regards to this record developer insights was pretty thin when compared to the hunter and tech developer insights there was some nicer hints there there's nothing being hinted at for crosshair which is one of the things i was looking for in general most of this is what i was talking about in my previous talk video where we're breaking down his kit reveal but that actually somewhat surprising that's my first video in months to not break 100 views i got like 96 right around there 
But what I'd like to look at here is the strategy tips portion. And a lot of this is what I was talking about in that kit reveal breakdown. He's going to be starting with nine stacks of Furious. So he's a turn away from Furious. He's got a bunch of different ways to get stealth. The one thing that they do bring up here is that they don't think he needs to be modded for much extra health and protection, that he doesn't need it. That's interesting. They suggest tenacity. That'll be an interesting thing to test if that is the way to deal with him. Which, when you consider a lot of the player base, talks about modding Nest for tenacity, modding Bosk for tenacity, a lot of people like to mod uh, Malik for tenacity, and a lot of player base doesn't do it. That could be an opportunity to gain an edge since those are mods that people are ignoring. Uh, but in terms of their suggestion here, there's only one primary for tenacity on the cross. You, there's still tons of room to be putting on a bunch of protection onto him. Using defense mods could still turn out great. And you can still find plenty of secondaries that are going to be putting on a bunch of like protection percentage or flat protection. I think there'll be plenty of room to still be making him very beefy, making sure he doesn't get debuffs, and still having a good amount of defense. But what I was looking here was clues of what those next kits could be, because what I did say in that final kit reveal was how nicely Wrecker, Hunter, and Tech fit together. Like they all reinforced each other. They all had all the buffs that was being hinted at in Hunter's kit. Like they're the 3v3 squad, not Crosshair. So I'm very much looking forward to on May the 4th Crosshair's kit reveal and seeing what could be in there because there are still no clues like there were for Tech and Wrecker of what Crosshair is going to be like. And we wrap up there. I've got a grand arena to do. I was so distracted with this that I forgot about it for a while. And then I was also distracted from work. So I delayed, uh, I had to make up that time elsewhere. Uh, we are going to start speculating on Kenobi and Maul in the next one. We're gonna push that, make that video tomorrow and push it out soon after. Thank you for watching. Thanks to all the subscribers. Thanks for everyone supporting the channel. I am going to put up that Jedi Knight Luke video again. And maybe I'll do the Jedi Master Luke one. Uh, if you could click on those, just throw them another tab, mute them, or whatever. What I'm just looking for is the algorithm to start finding them. That's a way you can really help me out, help out the channel. It worked with C-3PO. If you do a search on C-3PO, it now appears in the search results pretty high for that uh, that legendary event c3po uh, guide so again thank you be safe out there everyone and be excellent to each other